ಪಾತಿ ನಂದ್ರಜ ಬರನಾಗದ ಗೋಕುಲ ರಂಜನ ಯಸೋಮತಿ ನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಬರನಾಗರ ಗೋಕುಲ ರಂಜನ ಖಾನ ಜನ್ನ ಮಾಧನ ಮನೋಹರ ಫರನ್ನ ಜನ್ನ ಮನೋಹರ ಕಲೆಯ ಜಮಾನ ವಿಧಾನ ಜಮಾನ ವಿಧಾನ ಅಮಲ ಹರಿ ಅಮಲ ಹರಿ ವಿಭಿನ್ನ ಪುರಂಜರನ ಭಿನ್ನ ಕರ ಪರ ವಿಭಿನ್ನ ಪುರಂಜರನ ಭಿನ್ನ ಕರ ಪರ ವಂಶಿ ಪ್ರಜನ ಪಾಲನ ಸುರ ಕೋಲನ ಪ್ರಜನ ಪಾಲನ ಅಸುರ ಕೂಲನ ಶನ್ನ ನಂದ ಗುರನರ ಕೋಹಲ ನಂದ ಗುರನರ ಕೋಹಲ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾಧವ ನವನಿಧ ಚಕ್ಕರ ಗೋವಿಂದ ಮಾಧವ ನವನಿ ಕಥಸ್ಕರ ಸುಂದರ ನಂದ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಸುಂದರ ನಂದ ಗೋಪಾಲ ಜನ ಪಾಲನ ಸುರ ಕುಲನ ಶನ್ನ ಪ್ರಜ ಜನ ಪಾಲನ ಸುರ ಕುಲನ ಶನ್ನ ನಂದ ಕೋಧಾನ ರಕೋಹಾಲ ಗೋವಿಂದ 
Namao Vishnu Padaya Krishna Pastaya Bhutale Srimati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Iti Namne Namaste Sarasati Devi Goravani Pricharine Nirvise Shashunyavadi Paschacha Desatarine So this we're going to continue purification which we began this morning on His Divine Grace 
Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Thakur, Srila Prabhupada. Right? Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Srila Prabhupada. And when Bhaktivedanta Swami later on also took the name Prabhupada, there was some criticism from the God brothers. They said, that's the name of your Guru Maharaj. How you can use it? But Prabhupada explained, he said, I don't use it. He said, my disciples use it. <laughs> and uh, Prabhupada also explained, Jai Pataka Swami Maharaj, he was explaining, he said, Prabhupada said, he said, so many people use the name Prabhupada. He said, it's not meant for just one person. It's meant for all, like uh, Sanatana Goswami Prabhupada, Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, like the Jiva Goswami Prabhupada. You know, they often use the name Prabhupada. So there's, there was no harm in, in using it for the disciples. But Prabhupada said, I don't use it myself. And he took out his letterhead and he showed A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami. Didn't put Prabhupada. Anyway, uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada disappeared from the world on this day. I wanted to speak some things, so first maybe about his appearance, that he appeared in the holy place. Uh, Srila Prabhupada on one occasion, our own Prabhupada wrote a Vyasa Puja offering, he wrote a beautiful poem and it began, Adore you all the happy day when he, when he appeared at Puri, his divine grace, <laughs> our Lord and Master. Uh, adore you all the happy day when he appeared at Puri, the holy place, our Lord and Master, his divine grace, like that. So Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada appeared in Jagadguri because at that time his seminal father, Srila Satchidananda Bhakti Vinod, was the magistrate in Puri. And not only was the magistrate at Puri, but he was also in charge of overseeing the affairs of the administration of Lord Jagannath Temple. Big responsibility. You know, every year they have to put on that Rathiatra festival and every year hundreds of thousands of people come, pilgrims, to visit Lord Jagannath Temple. So he was overseeing the affairs of the temple and he had his house on the main road, the road where the chariot goes. When they pull the chariot from the Jagannath Puri temple down to the Gundichak temple, they go right past the house where Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur was living. Today, there is a Godiyama temple there. And uh, they have also a house. Sometimes you can stay there, you can get a room there, you can stay there. It's conveniently located on the main road. The, that road, of course, is extremely wide because it has to accommodate the Jagannath chariots when they pull them every day. So, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati appeared there at that house where his sister Srila Bhakti Vinod Thakur was living. And uh, it's described that when he was born, when he came from the womb of the mother, at that time the umbilical cord, which, you know, there's the umbilical cord from the mother's womb around the child. So when he appeared from the womb, that cord was wrapped around his neck like a Brahman thread. Just like you wear the Brahman thread around the neck and around the chest. So the umbilical cord of the mother was wrapped around the child, just like a Brahman thread. So that was a very interesting indication. Because Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur very much desired to have children who would help him of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, that when Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur began his preaching, Lord Chaitanya's movement was in very poor condition and there was a lot of sahajism, 
people were not following strictly, they were all, there was so much bogus philosophy being propagated. And it was Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur who began to really preach the actual message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu based on the pure chanting of the holy name and the strict following of principles. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was one of the children of Bhaktivinoda Thakur and he appeared there while, while Bhaktivinoda Thakur was uh, in government service as a magistrate and also overseeing the affairs of the Jagannath Puri temple. So he had, Bhaktivinoda Thakur had a very good position there. And it's described that on one occasion, when the Rathiatra was being performed, they pulled the chariot, and just like when we go in some housing areas here in uh, BM or around Butterworth, we go around the housing areas and people come out from the home, right? People come out from their home and they bring coconut and they bring bananas or some offering to the deity. And they even bring their child, right? So Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he had appeared as a young baby. And the mother, Bhakti Vinoda Thakur's wife, Bhagavati Devi, I think, she came out with the child. And they wanted the child to get the blessings of Lord Jagannath. So the chariot stopped in front of their home and they brought the offering. And at the same time, they passed the child up onto the chariot, to the people on the chariot. And they took the child, the young child, and they put the child at the feet of Jagannath. Right? When, you have a, when your wife delivers a child, First thing you should do is bring child to the temple to show Krishna. Krishna likes to see the newborn children, right? You do that? Huh? Supposed to. Supposed to bring the children to the temple. Newborn child, first day out, you bring the child to the temple and place the child before the deity. Show Krishna. Huh? Not the first day, of course, not the first day. First day you come out. You have to wait for a month or so, but when you first come out, then at that time, the first place you go, when you come out, go to temple, offering to deity, to show Krishna, right? So, when Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was placed at the feet of Lord Jagannath, at that time, the, the garland fell, the string broke, and the garland fell on top of the child. So they thought, oh, very auspicious, very nice, huh? This child, maybe he's, maybe he's been sent to help us make service for Lord Chaitanya's movement. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur was encouraged to see these auspicious omens, the Brahman thread, and then the garland falling on his head. And so he took a lot of effort to train the child and to educate not only him but all the children in Krishna consciousness. So uh, when the child was a young boy, it's described that Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur had brought some mangoes to offer to the deity. And it was it's mentioned that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he, as a young child, he saw the mangoes and he thought, oh, very nice, take a mango. And he took the mango and began to eat. And when Bhaktivinoda Thakur saw that the boy was eating the mango before offering to Krishna, he told him, oh, you have done offense. This is not good. You have taken the mango before we offer to the Lord. They have to be offered to the deity. Then only you can take the mango. So it is said from that day on, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati would never accept mangoes. When people would bring him mangoes, he would say, Thank you very much, but I am an offender. 
God take? For, so practically for the rest of his life, he never accepted mangoes, fresh mangoes, because he remembered the incident as a young child, how he had taken the fruit before offering. So that kind of determination that was very uh, prominent in the character of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. Very staunch determination. He maintained strictly the principles of Brahmacharya life. Even as a young man, he went to college and he began a, a, move, a society for Brahmacharis. You know, now that you go to you know, people are all degraded, you know, that the young boys live with the young girls, you know, without marriage, and they don't follow any kind of religious principles. And they would laugh at somebody trying to promote Brahmacharya. But Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was so powerful, and he was so convinced about what he was doing, he got people to join him and to take to this brahmacharya life. Yeah. Brahmacharya life does not mean one cannot marry, but brahmacharya life is the proper preparation for grihastha life. If one is not trained as a brahmachari, he won't make a good householder because he hasn't got control of the mind and senses. So we see again and again in the Srimad Bhagavatam how the ma young men, before their marriage, they first of all do some austerity. They get... Even today it's done. In Thailand, the young men, young men from the traditional Thai family, they become a monk, a Buddhist monk for some months. They go and live in the monastery, they get trained to control their mind and senses, restraining the senses, and then after some months in the ashram, they come out, marriage is arranged. But today, what happens? Young men, young women, before marriage, often the girl is pregnant and they have to get married. She's already pregnant, you know, she's going to have the baby very soon, so they get married totally uncontrolled, undisciplined. And so the result is you do not get good progeny. But Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was very concerned for practicing strictly the principles of Brahmacharya. And because he practiced, it said, it said Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati was a nice tikka brahmachari. He never had semen to fall down. And because his semen never fell down, it went up to the brain and his brain became very strong and very fixed. He had a very powerful memory. He could recite slokas, so many slokas from the scriptures. And he was very powerful in his preaching. People, the Mayavadis, they could not... Even at one point he went to Radhakund because Bhaktivinoda Thakur has his house there in Radhakund. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada had gone there to Radhakund and he gave a lecture. The Babaji's, you know, all these Babaji's live there at Radhakund. So they all came and they thought Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati is going to speak about Gopi Baba and he'll tell us all Gopi Leela. But Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati instead, he spoke on the Upanishads. Upanishads mean the knowledge brings one closer to Krishna. He did not touch at all on Gopi Leela. He spoke on the basic philosophy of spirituality, which comes from the Upanishads. The Upanishads are the stepping stone into Krishna consciousness. So he was not interested to flatter these Babaji's. He knew that they were all fallen, useless people. So he gave them the 
basic knowledge to help them to get properly situated. So, Siddhanta Sarasati, he was very powerful in his memory and very strong, firm in his determination. Nothing could shake him. No one could overcome him. He was a very powerful preacher. And because he practiced this brahmacharya, he was very renounced. This morning, how he took a vow to chant the holy name many hundreds of thousands of times. And he was living there in Mayapur under an umbrella in a very simple place with nobody serving him. Somehow or other he was maintaining his life. Nobody knows how. So he did great austerity and he studied also the scriptures and he realized the conclusions of the scriptures. So he could preach it very well. Uh, after he established temples, he would come to the temple and he would see how much money they had. And then he would take the money and he would project, like often he would diorama exhibit made. Just like we have in Mayapur, we have a nice exhibit diorama. Have you seen the diorama there in Mayapur? Oh, Lord Chaitanya Leela. Beautiful dioramas, very well done. Nicely sculptured and painted by Bengali artists. All in the pastimes of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he was very fond of doing these kind of things. He would take the money from the temple and do a big project. The other the people in the temple, they say, Guru Maharaj, there's no money left. You spent all the money. And Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada would say to them, Yes, good. You will have to go out and preach now. There's no money, so there'll be no prasada unless you go out and do some preaching. He didn't want the devotees just to sit around the temple and eat. He didn't want them just to get fat. If somebody put on too much weight, he would tell them, you're getting too fat, you're eating too much rice. You could Bengalis, you know, they like rice. So he would tell them, less rice, more preaching, more kirtan. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati didn't like to have temples in a quiet place. He liked to have the temple in the big city where all the people are. He wanted to be there where the masses are and confront them and give them Krishna consciousness. So he would put on big preaching programs like that, inviting people to come here. He would go into Calcutta and he would get the big government leaders, even British people, he would get them to come out to Mayapur a hundred years ago and it was just a jungle. It was just a jungle, Mayapur. There was no proper roads. Somehow or other Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada was so convincing, he would get all these people to come out there to Mayapur to see the place acknowledge the actual birth site of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So this is the mood of Bhakti Siddhartha Sarasati Thakur, Prabhupada. You can understand he must have been such a great personality that he could have disciples like our own Srila Prabhupada. We all worship the lotus feet of Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We think of him as being the greatest soul, but his spiritual master, the, the, our own Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he worshipped the lotus feet of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada. And he gave great respect for his Guru Maharaj. He understood him to be a very enlightened, self-realized soul. 
and he would, Prabhupada told us, he only met his Guru Maharaj five times. Not a lot, he didn't get association. He met him first in 1922, then his initiation took place in 1933 because they met initially in Calcutta, but that was just un un it was not uh, a regular meeting. He just by chance, he met him, his friend had taken him there, and at that time, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati had told him, why don't you preach the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, right? Young man here, nice young man, why don't you take up this work? preaching the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Don't just be a worldly man, an engineer, a lawyer, a doctor, all oh, useless. It's all mundane material, working in the factory all your life. No, go out and preach the message of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu around the world. And of course, Prabhupada was thinking, well, I am a family man, I have young children. I could not do it at that time. But later on, he never forgot the instructions of his spiritual master. And he took it up. Even in his old age, Prabhupada took up the order. He said, better late than never. All right? That's this. If one does it, well, they're still young, then that's the best. You preach while you're young, then Prabhupada said, then in old age, you can sit down in the Holy Dham and read the books of the Goswamis. That's what you can do. When you're young, you travel and preach. And then in old age, then you sit down and study the books of the Goswamis. So, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, uh, Prabhupada established his mat around India and he even sent people to Europe. He sent them to you as some of his disciples. He arranged for them to go to England and to Germany because he wanted to establish Krishna consciousness everywhere. In the times of Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, India was under the rule of the British. So Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati sent disciples to England to go there and preach to these British people and convince them about Lord Chaitanya's message. And uh, he even supported them while they were in England. And then he was sending money to them to maintain them. He was in India. India was, of course, a poor country. But somehow Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati arranged to send money there to his disciples who were there in England trying to spread Lord Chaitanya's mission. So this, his, his vision was just like his own father, Bhaktivinoda Thakur. We know in the year of Prabhupada's birth, right? Who knows what, what was the year of Prabhupada's birth? 1896, right? So in that year, Bhaktivinoda Thakur sent a book to McGill University in Canada, the, the teachings of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And the devotees, they went there to the library in McGill University and they found the actual book which Bhaktivinoda Thakur had sent there a hundred years ago. Amazing. Bhaktivinoda Thakur had that vision to spread Lord Chaitanya's message everywhere because Lord Chaitanya had predicted Priti Viti Achi Yat Nagar Adi Gram Sarvatra Prachar Hoi Be Morana The holy name would be heard in every town and village all over the world. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur tried to do that. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur, his main preaching was in the villages. Bhaktivinoda Thakur appeared more than a hundred years ago. 
He was preaching in India at that time. There were not so much factories. There were no big cities. He was preaching to the people, and the people lived more in the villages. So he had his, he has his book like a Namahata, you know, the marketplace of the holy name, going to all the villages for organizing the preaching. But of course now you don't get so many people in the villages. All the young people move to the cities and the big houses in the villages, they're all empty. The people move to the cities and they move to Bombay, and Delhi, and Calcutta. And then they go to foreign countries also even, you know, they don't stay in the village. But that's the situation. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur in his time, he was preaching in the villages. Later on, his son, Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, his preaching was more in the cities, in the big cities. He was there in the cities preaching because that's where the people were. The people were moving to the city. India was becoming industrialized. And Bhakti Siddhanta had to go to where the people were to give him, to give Krishna consciousness. He established his centers there in different cities of India, North and South India. We know that Gaudiya other places there. For Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati, he was traveling around preaching and organizing this mission of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He preached in the cities. Later on, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati's preeminent disciple, Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada, he preached around the world. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada wanted to preach around the world, but not able to establish anything at that particular time. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati had sent sannyasis to England to preach. They had gone to sannyasis, but they didn't get great success. People People had asked, what do we need to do to become a brahmana? And they told them, you have to follow four principles, right? No meat, fish and egg, no, no intoxication, no sex. They said, impossible, right? The, the aristocratic British people said, impossible, we can never follow this. And so they came back to India and they told the devotees in India, we told them what you need to do to become a devotee, they said, impossible. So everyone said, it's impossible. But later on, Srila Prabhupada sent his householders and they showed it was possible. They showed it was very possible to make people Krishna conscious. Householders went Three householder couples went to England and Prabhupada showed, he said, you see, the, the sannyasis went, they could not do it, but the grihastas, they did it. Of course, they were real grihastas, they were not grihamedis, they were renounced. They lived very simply and they accepted great austerity for preaching Lord Chaitanya's mission. So Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati, he had that mood, he wanted People should be trained first as the brahmacharya. Good training as brahmacharya. Do some austerity. Then you're qualified for householder life. You enter into householder. Householder life is a responsibility. Grihastha ashram. It's not that we be, oh, I'm a householder and I don't chant anymore. I don't go to temple. No, householders also. It's an ashram. It's a spiritual ashram. You can make progress there. We have to show the example. Most of the world today are householders and they need to see the example of our householder devotees. And later on, householder life is an ashram. It's temporary. You don't remain a householder. Later on, you move into Vanaprastha. 
right? Like Dwicha, Dwicha Goranga here, he's a vanaprastha, retired from material life. No more material duty, only duty is the temple, taking care of the temple and pushing on the Krishna consciousness movement, right? That's a retired ashram. We don't retire from Krishna consciousness, but we retire from the material duties. No more, no more interest in getting a new car or getting a bigger house or having more children or anything. No, the business is Krishna, studying the scriptures, worshipping the deity, going to holy places, and taking part in all the spiritual activities can stay with the wife, but the business is spiritual. So this is the van, this is the Varnashram system, Vanaprastha. And even some may even go on and take sannyas. Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati also gave people some some people sannyas. And we see also when we go on Parikrama in Mayapur we see some of the different temples which Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati established in the holy land of Navadweep. You can see the temple like at Suvarna Bihar, the home of Suvarna Sen. Suvarna Sen, a great king in the Satya Yuga, and how Narada Muni came to him and told him how Chaitanya was going to be come, come here. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati he established the Gaudiya temple there, and then he found also the deities of uh, the deities of um, Vani, uh, Vani what's, that, what's that devotee? Vaidya Vanina, Vaidya Vanina's devotees, the deities at Champakahati of Gor Gadarha, at Champakahati, Vanina. He was a great devotee of Lord Chaitanya. He was a brother of Gadarhar Pandit. So the deities of Gaur Gadarhar, they were discovered by Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada and he arranged to take over the worship of these deities because they've been worshipped since the time of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And so this was all done by Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati. He developed the Tri Parikrama. And when he would go on Parikrama, there was great opposition from the, the caste Brahmins. Though there was opposition also about the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Because people were saying the birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was at Navadweep site. But Bhaktivinoda Thakur had established the actual birthplace of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was over at Mayapur. So there was a lot of controversy about that. The Saraswati took out the Parikrama at one point when they came to Navadweep, they, they were all stoned. People threw stones on them and they were all attacked by these dacoits. They threw stones on them. He had to tolerate all this kind of treatment. There was even an attempt to kill him. They want, there was a, some people, they, they, they wanted to arrange for the murder of Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati. But the local policeman refused to allow any kind of a very saintly person. We should not do anything to harm him. It will be very sinful. And when he went to Vrindavan also, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati led his devotees at Parikrama in Vrindavan. When they came to Vrindavan, all the shops closed. They didn't want to sell anything to the people of Kodiyamat. They were all against Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati Prabhupada. Why? Because he was giving the Brahmin thread to people coming from Brahmin families. He would initiate people as Brahmins if they were strict devotees. And he would give them the Brahmin thread to show that a Vaishnava is more than a Brahman. So the, the caste Brahmins, those who were Brahmins by birth, they were very upset and they were very much against Bhaktisiddhanta Saraswati's movement for preaching like this. And when they came there in Vrindavan, they closed all the shops. 
They said, we don't want to sell anything to you people. So they had these kind of challenges. They faced these challenges. And you can imagine how much more opposition there was when Srila Prabhupada, when Swami Prabhupada came, and he initiated and gave Brahman threats and even sannyas and the title Goswami to people from Malaysia Desh, from Western countries, not even born in India, but from countries outside India, which is all considered Malaysia Desh. So, so much opposition came from these caste Brahmins. Didn't want Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati giving the bread to people who were not born in Brahmin families. But he was very determined. He had that Brahmacharya. He was very detached and he could go on without, he could face all of these challenges and go on and preach the Krishna consciousness movement. He saw all of these things, test from Krishna, and he fought to establish what is the real message of Lord Chaitanya. Of course, Lord Chaitanya taught that birth is not the qualification, but one is a Brahmana by quality and by activities. A real Brahmana should work like a Brahmana. They should worship the deity and teach people to worship the deity. They should study the scriptures and teach the scriptures. And they can give charity and also accept charity. The problem is that in the Kali Yuga, in today's society, so-called Brahmins are expert in only one of the six activities. They're expert in taking charity. They Mahaprabhu. So we are lamenting his departure. That on this day he left the world. He gone back to his eternal lila in the spiritual world. It is said Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati Prabhupada is a manjari. He's one of the manjaris who assist in the pastimes of Radha and Krishna. But for the sake of preaching, he took up, for the sake of, out of compassion for the fallen souls, he took up that preaching mission. He didn't just sit and contemplate Radha and Krishna, but he preached the glories of the Lord everywhere. So we want to continue in that mood and remember all of these wonderful qualities of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati. Are there any questions or any comments? Yes, Prabhu. Uh, my understanding is he left the body in Bhak Bazaar at the temple in Bhak Bazaar in Calcutta. Natural, natural departure, old age, in the 60s. He'd done great austerities, which, you know, that's not very helpful for, for a long life. Huh? Well, his samadhi in 
Mayapur, they brought his body, his divine body, after he departed from the world, they brought the body to Mayapur and put it in Samadhi there, at the Chaitanya Mat temple there, near the birthplace. So Samadhi is there, every, we go there every year. It's his Samadhi, but he departed in Calcutta at, the, at his temple, the bazaar. There were indications that he was going to leave the body. And he'd gone to Jagannath Puri and then he came back from Jagannath Puri to Calcutta and there were indications that he's not going to remain very long in the world. And so he departed and it said uh, he had one of the disciples sing the song Sri Rupa Manjari Padma. But the disciple who he asked to sing the song, he was not the very expert bhajan singer. But Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasati did not care very much about who was expert in bhajan. He cared more about who was a good devotee, who was a staunch and strict Vaishnava. Even though not very musically adapted, he chose that person to sing the song as he departed from the world. And he gave instructions to his disciples to follow in the teachings of Rupa and Raghunath Goswami. Of course, the, the big pastime was that after he left, he had told the disciples before his departure, work together cooperatively, don't establish any one person as Acharya, work together, you know, and make some body, a governing kind of body to oversee the affairs. But after his departure, they nominated somebody, one person as the Acharya, and they got problems. The Acharya got problems, and the whole society they fight, they fought over who should get what property. Different people say, I want this temple, this is our land, this is our temple. They fought over the bricks and the cement. They, I, this temple should be my temple, I should be in charge of this temple. And there was no cooperative mood of working together. So the society, Gaudiya divided into many different society. So, united you stand, divided we fall. And somehow this is what happened. So Prabhupada had seen all this, Bhaktivedanta, Swami Prabhupada had seen all this. He was very concerned before his departure that we all work together, united, to keep the movement strong and healthy. So Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati had this desire. Okay. So now is our team. Thank you very much. Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati Srila Prabhupada Ki. Srila Bhaktivedanta Swami Srila Prabhupada Ki. Gaur Premanande. Haribo.